Hey folks, Tony Kuiper's TK7 panel is out now. And in this video, which is part of my TK7 video guide, I'll take you through what all the new features, functions, and upgrades are. And I could go on about what a great job Tony did with all these upgrades, but I'll just let you watch the video and you can see for yourself. Before we begin working through the V7 panel in detail, let's do a quick preview of the awesome new or upgraded features it has. I'm just going to quickly show you what they all are for now, and I'll show you how they work more in depth in future chapters. First of all, there's an updated rapid mask engine. The speed of the mass making engine is now about 20% faster. The increased speed is best appreciated in mass that traditionally required multiple calculation, like a Lights 5 or any of the zone mass at either end of the spectrum. In the Rapid Mass Modules Modify section, the Levels modification has been replaced with a triple handle slider making for easy levels adjustments. So it works the same as the old Levels modification with a mid-tone slider, a dark slider, and a highlight slider. But now you can make those level adjustment modifications to any mask directly from the module without needing to open a levels adjustment window. In addition to the single slider modify, the modify section has several other changes that allow more control when customizing masks. There's now a brightness contrast adjustment for modifying mass. And that's in addition to the previous curves adjustment, like we've always had, and the levels adjustment, which is now right here in the module itself. The modify section also now has dodge and burn buttons so that you can directly dodge highlights in the mask or burn shadows in the mask. There are also now black and white brushes, so you can paint black or white directly on the mask. The new mask, the rapid mask button, allows you to quickly create a mask for just the part of the image that should be affected by the mask. For example, maybe just the sky, if you want to adjust that without the landscape. Finally, there's a new Adobe Camera Raw button in the Modify section that allows you to modify a mask using the Camera Raw adjustments. The Channel menu in the Source section now has four new options. Now, in addition to making masks from the red, green, or blue channels, you can also make masks from cyan, magenta, yellow, and black channels. These additional channels give you new options for finding the right mask for the job. There are also new color masks available. These six new color zones stretch the color corrections across wider ranges of color in the image. With the new color ranges, the red-yellow zone can be a good way to select the warm colors in an image. And the blue-cyan zone can be good for selecting the cool colors in an image. All the zones are worth some experimentation. For example, the cyan-green zone might be good for selecting ocean water in certain images, not this one obviously, and the green-yellow zone can be good for selecting foliage, which, if it's bright green, can often have a lot of yellow in it. There's a new checkbox option in the settings for the Rapid Mass module called Keep Channels Panel Clean. This is for automatically deleting the loom lock and rapid mass channels after a mask is used. If you leave the box unchecked, it works just like the V6 panel did, and the channels are not automatically deleted after the mask is used. 
The advantage to this is that you can use the same mask multiple times or make a selection of the same mask more than once. Checking this box tells the panel to automatically delete these channels as soon as the current mask is used. The advantage of this choice is that every time you make a new mask, it will automatically be up to date with the current image tones, and you don't have to remember to delete the leftover channels when you're finished working. Another new setting in the Rapid Mask settings is the checkbox for Auto Hide Selection Edges. These days, the panel shows you what the mask looks like in real time. So even if you need to load the mask as a selection, you probably don't need or want to see the selection edges because they make it hard to see what you're doing. If the Auto Hide Selection Edges box is checked, it automatically hides the selection edges when you make a luminosity selection. The Active Selection Indicator still lets you know that the selection has been loaded, and if you do want to see the selection edges for some reason, you can always use this button in both the Combo and CX modules to unhide them. A common use of luminosity masks is to paint through a luminosity selection onto a mask. The quick paint buttons speed up this process for you. For example, if I had made a curves adjustment to darken, but now I want to paint a mask that will just target that adjustment to the light tones in the sky, I would turn off the visibility of that adjustment layer, I would load a Lights One mask, and then I would load a selection of that lights mask. And now I'll just click the button with a white brush on a black mask. This button does five tasks in a single click. Number one, it creates a layer mask on the curves layer that matches the mask color of the button, in this case, black. Second, it activates the paintbrush tool. Third, it sets the brush color to the opposite color of the mask, in this case, white. Fourth, it makes the layer mask active for painting on it, and five, it turns the layer visibility back on. Now you can simply paint on the mask to create your hand-painted luminosity mask and reveal the adjustment just where you want it. The Apply Output button now has a small secondary option designated FM and this is to apply filter masks instead of applying layer masks. In short, this feature allows you to use any mask you make with the panel on smart filters instead of on layer masks. It's a somewhat advanced application and will be most useful to users already familiar with smart filters. For web sharpening in the CX, Combo, and Batch modules, you can now set different pixel dimensions for the vertical or horizontal side of an image when sizing and sharpening for the web. For example, if I set them both to 1500 pixels, then I can size and sharpen a vertical image to 1500 pixels on the vertical side, or by clicking this button, I can size and sharpen an image to 1500 pixels on the horizontal side. Also, if I set different vertical and horizontal pixel dimensions, then if I use the Fit button, if I have a horizontal image, when I click Fit, the horizontal image will be 1500 pixels wide. But if I have a vertical image, when I click the Fit button, the vertical image will be 1080 pixels tall. There are several new actions in the TK menu. The new freehand vignette action allows you to draw the shape of a freehand vignette. The spotlight action is the opposite of the freehand vignette. It allows you to draw a spotlight or multiple spotlights freehand and then create the spotlights. For those who make adjustments in LAB color mode, the RGB LAB action creates the LAB workspace as a smart object.
This allows you to make LAB adjustments and then save those LAB adjustments back to the smart object in the original RGB document. The new dehaze action adds color and contrast in a manner that cuts through the atmospheric haze, but without color changes that can happen with other dehaze or clarity methods. The add color action is still here, but it uses a new method that allows you to preview the color on the image before you select it. And after you paint the color in, it also allows you to go back and adjust or modify the color after the fact. And a bunch of features have been upgraded on all the modules that make the panel even better. All the buttons are now 20% larger than they were in the V6. To save space in the panel, the help text is now hidden unless you want to see it. If you do want to see the help text for any button, you simply hold down the Alt or the Option key and hover over the button and the text will appear. And you can hover over any button to get a description of what it does. And that works for all the panels. Icons have replaced written button names in many places to create a cleaner look and to provide a more universal interface since TK Actions users speak many different languages. If you're not sure what an icon means, simply hold down the Alt or the Option key and roll over the button that has the icon and you'll get a description that explains to you what that button is doing. There are now two ways to access the settings for any module. You can still click the TK icon that appears somewhere on all the modules, or you can also go to the panel menu for any module and select settings. Settings are where the module's language, color, and active selection indicator can be customized. And finally, the V7 panel now has a feature called Easy Update. If you're a V6 user, your settings from your V6 panel will be automatically imported when the V7 modules are installed. Your language choice and personal action names transfer over from the previous version so you don't have to reset them. So I think anyone would agree that is an impressive list of new features and spectacular upgrades. I don't know how he keeps on doing it, but every time Tony updates to the next version of the panel, he's found ways to make it better, more powerful, more efficient, more fun, and easier to use. Okay, next we're gonna start looking at what this panel does and really dig into each button and feature one by one.